So how far can you go on one battery? Well, I think we've all got a good idea of how much range we can get from our own bikes. But what I want to know is how much further you can go on a 700 watt hour compared to a 500 watt hour or even a 320 watt hour. So today we're hitting the trails and riding them till they go flat. The loop I'm attempting to ride today is 34 miles with just over 3,000 feet of climbing. It's a mix of single track, downhill, tech climbs and some road sections linking it all up. Now I can easily manage this loop on a 700 watt hour battery if I'm running eco and trail mode, but today it's all about turbo mode. The bikes we're using for today's video are coming from Specialize. Just due to the fact that the batteries can be swapped out super quick, the Levo is capable of running a 500 watt hour battery and a 700 watt hour battery. And the Levo SL, well that comes with a 320 watt hour battery built in. So the results from today's ride will differ from brand to brand, to Yamaha, to Bosch, to Shimano, due to the fact that those motors are all putting out different torque figures. So this is a specialized Levo. This bike can run on a 500 watt hour battery or a 700 watt hour battery by simply removing it and replacing it in the down tube. The bike is powered by the Brose 90 Newton meter torque motor. And this bike is rolling on 29 inch wheels, front and rear. It's an aluminum frame with 150 mil travel. Now the wheels that we've got on this bike are pretty hardcore. They've got Max's Acid Guide downhill uh, casing tires on there, rolling on Mavic D-Max wheel set. The reason I've got those wheels on this bike is this is my do-it-all bike. It's used for everything from cross country to downhill to free ride. And to keep the results fair, we're gonna be swapping the wheel set from the Levo onto the Levo SL. So all the bikes are gonna be running exactly the same wheel set, tires and tire pressure. So this is the Levo SL, the Levo's younger sibling as a full carbon frame, an internal 320 watt hour battery, a slightly smaller motor pumping out 35 newton meters, and it rolls on 29 inch wheels. Now a big part of battery range is gonna be the system weight. Now this is your weight, your bike's weight, and your riding kit combined. Now the bigger the rider or the heavier the weight, the less range you're gonna get from the battery. And vice versa, if you're a lightweight rider, you're gonna get more range from your battery. Right, time for a weigh-in then. Well, myself, I'm weighing in at 92 kilos. The Levo SL weighs 19 kilos. And along for the ride, I'm bringing along my backpack, which is weighing at three kilos. So that's giving me the final weight of 114 kilos on the Levo SL. Moving over to the Levo, well, again, I'm 92 kilos. The bike is weighing in at 24.8 kilos. That's with the 700 watt hour battery. And again, I've got the same backpack at three kilos give me a final weight of 119.8 kilograms. So what exactly is the difference between the 700 watt hour battery and the 500 watt hour battery? Well, on paper, the 700 watt hour should give you 40% more range over the 500 watt hour battery. They're both exactly the same physical size and there's a slight difference in weight, but we're not talking a lot. We're talking about a full water bottle's difference in weight between the two batteries. And the cost for these batteries is gonna to vary too. The bigger the battery, the more expensive it is gonna be. For example, a 500 watt hour battery for the Specialized Levo is coming in at around 800 pounds. Whereas the 700 watt hour battery, that comes in at 1100 pounds. One of the difficulties of today's ride is gonna be keeping the same pace for all three of my loops. So I have my Garmin on board to keep an eye on my watts output whilst I'm moving along. Okay, right, time to kick this ride off on the Levo with a 500 watt hour battery. We engage full on turbo mode for this one. Let's see how she goes. We're on the road for these first few miles and uh, as you can see, we're actually above the limiter. So we're not taking any battery out of the bike currently. So it doesn't matter whether you're an eco or the bike turned off. If you're not using that battery power, obviously it's gonna affect the range one bit. It's when the motor's engaged. At the minute, we're just rolling free, free of any drain on the battery. So what difference will a larger battery make? Well, hardly any. The biggest differences will be range. 
On paper, a 700 watt hour battery has 40% more potential range compared to a 500 watt hour. The bigger battery will also put range anxiety at rest and enable you to ride in more varied power modes. This means that you'll be able to enjoy trail and turbo mode instead of staying in eco the whole time on those rides that push the battery to its limits. Yeah, we're at 79% there. So just under 20% battery gone at 4.9 miles. That was a long, hard climb up through the woods and we've actually dropped another bar. So we're down at 58% on the battery. We've ridden 8.67 miles. So 8.7 miles pretty much in total. And we're on 58% of the battery. Right, so I've just dropped to 50%, literally at 10. 10.05 miles, bang on an hour of ride and it's actually gone down to 50%. So why choose a smaller battery? Well, if you live in a town or a city and the type of riding you are doing consists of tame trails, fire roads, or maybe some road work with not a lot of elevation, then you might get away with a smaller 500 watt hour battery. So why would you choose a bigger battery then? Well, if you live in a mountainous region where it involves climbing huge elevation before you even get to your riding spot, then you will definitely need the bigger batteries to enjoy the full potential of your e-bike. Technical terrain also takes a lot more from the battery with the collisions and steps sapping that battery away. In short, the bigger the rides or the bigger elevation climbs, you will need the battery to match. But weight will also have a huge impact on this, which we'll chat about later on. Just as an example, when Steve did Tour de Mont Blanc, he was getting 5,000 foot on one 700 watt hour battery, whilst his racing snake mate at 58 kilos was getting over 10,000 feet of climbing. I've just hit over 13 miles now and it's dropped down to three bars left on the battery now. So we're losing it uh, a little now. We're quite a far way round on our ride. So pretty much past the halfway point. So it could be an interesting ride home. So how will weight affect the battery? The heavier the system weight of the bike, meaning you and your bike combined will affect range. A lightweight rider on the same bike with the same battery will go further if the bike is ridden in the same manner. Weight will also affect speed. When it comes to climbing on your e-mountain bike, a lightweight rider will again be faster up the hill over a heavy weight, but vice versa, pointed down the hill, then the heavier rider will be faster, assuming their skills allow them. Right, so the red light has finally come on. 16.95 miles. This is actually gonna reduce the assist from turbo back down to a lesser assist modes, meaning that it's become even harder work, but we're bang on pretty much 17 miles now, just clicking over to it this second, 17 miles there. And we are down on the red, on the last few percentages of the battery. I'll look on mission control a second. So yeah, 13%. All right, 17 and a half miles. And we are on the red light still, cruising some single track. But well, we've got a big climb coming up. And I think that is where we may see the ride come to an end on the 500 watt hour on the Levo. So the battery management system has actually kicked this assist into a lower assist mode. So essentially you might see us getting a little bit more range out of this last segment of the battery than what we have done on the rest of the ride. Because obviously riding in that lower assist mode, you're not taking as much from the battery and hence you might get a bit more mileage. So it's be interesting to see what this last segment of the battery will actually do. So there we are as you come into the car park at the bottom of one of the climbs, the Levo 500 watt hour assistance 
has come to an end. We still have the final bar of the battery on, but if I look on mission control, I literally have no assistance whatsoever. Yes, yeah, so you've got 6% battery left, 18.43 miles. So there's no assistance at all coming from the motor. Even if I change down into those lower power settings, I'm getting nothing. So that is it over for the 500 watt hour battery at 18.45 miles. Right, I'm now aboard the Turbo Levo SL. So this is the smaller battery out of all of the bikes, 320 watt hours. So let's see how far she go. Off we go again. Can you change the battery capacity on your e-mountain bike? Well, manufacturers are aware some of us like to stretch out the battery capacity of our bikes. And we're seeing riders either sticking a spare battery in their backpack, or more recently, either a piggyback system or a range extender. A great example of this is the Levo SL. By adding a 160 watt hour bottle style battery into the bottle cage, it will bump up the capacity from 320 watt hours to 480 watt hours, whilst only adding one kilo of weight. Right, we just come out of the woods at four and a half miles on the Levo SL and it has dropped another bar of the battery. So that's 20% of the available, 100%. We're on a bit of a steady single track climb. This is quite a long one, actually. But I want to mention about the type of ground and the surfaces you're riding. This is actually quite a hard pack climb, sort of almost, not tarmac, but it's got a lot of gravel in there, so it becomes quite hard pack. And that will also affect range as well. The trails you're riding are like the hard pack, you know, even uh, sort of gravel style roads, fire roads. That's going to be a lot easier on your battery and say soft clay, slippy trails where your wheel's spinning and getting sucked in. It makes a big difference on that overall battery range. Right, we just clocked in over nine miles. We're at the top of a big road climb at the minute. And we have used 40% of the battery. So we've got six bars remaining and 9.1 miles. So we're just about to drop back into the woods get off road again enough of this road stuff all right so I just got to the top of that big long gravelly climb on the Levo SL and that's dropped a bar of battery, so we're down on four bars here, and we're just clocking up pretty much 12 miles now, so we've used 60% um, of the battery. We've got four bars left. Grinding away on these climbs, the motor on the SL isn't, doesn't give you quite as much assist as the full-powered Levo. Levo SL gives you two times the amount of assist on the climbs in turbo, whereas the Levo gives you four times the amount of your input, so quite a big difference there. And obviously the drain on the motor is going to be higher on that higher powered unit. We just dropped down to two bars now on the Levo SL. 16.1 miles of riding along, a bit of descending. I've just hit 18 miles on the Levo SL on this horrible chalk climb and the red light has come on. So we're into the final percentage of the battery. So I'm a bit further up the climb than what stopped the 500 watt hour Levo battery. But the Levo SL has dropped down into its lowest mode of assistance. And that isn't a lot on this bike. This hill is becoming pretty 
pretty hard work. We've still got one bar of battery, albeit on red at the moment, but this climb definitely isn't much fun at the minute. Still getting assist from the motor, so I'm gonna crack on till it actually stops assisting me. Whoa, there we go. Literally 19.03 miles. The battery has come to an end. I've got no assistance whatsoever from the motor. Still interested to see what just this 700 watt hour can provide us with. Will it get us around the loop? Time will tell. I'm off for a nice uh, non-assisted ride home. <laughs> Right, so I'm now aboard the Levo with a 700 watt hour battery. Engaged turbo mode, we've got 100%. Let's go. Right, we're just over two miles in now. We just got off the main road onto some of the back lanes. Um, 2.18 miles. And at the minute, we're still on 100% battery, 10 bars at the moment. So what are some examples of bikes with higher capacity batteries? Well, the one I'm riding today, the Levo with a 700 watt hour battery is pretty high up there. It's running quite close to the Rockfield RX 750. That packs a 750 watt hour battery into it. But the biggest one currently available is a battery in the M1 Spitzing, which is 1,050 watt hours. But that's a 48 volt system, so it's got a bigger draw from that battery originally. thought literally as we just come to 6.2 miles in I've just dropped another bar and we literally crested that hill climb it was a tarmac hill climb but pretty steep so it's going to take quite a lot of juice out of the battery especially in that turbo mode so we are down to eight bars now there are many factors that can affect the range on your battery things like components tire choice is pretty key here big downhill tires provide grip but also use a lot of energy compared to a lightweight XC tire that rolls fast and be a lot more efficient and won't drain the battery as much. Ground conditions make a big difference uh, as to the range you're gonna get out of a bike. Obviously the ground soft, the friction increases, therefore it's harder to drive that bike through the mud and the slop as well. And you're gonna find that the bike's average speed will be slower in dry conditions. You've obviously got less rolling resistance and you're just playing around in the dust rather than slogging it up and down in the mud and the grime. Vertical gain. If your ride is going up and over mountains, off-road versus a flat canal path trail, then you can expect a lot less range too. Rider fitness. If you're helping the motor work and being above the limiter on your ride, the motor doesn't have to put in too much work. If you stick it in turbo and simply sit there and become a passenger on your ride, then expect to be eating that battery up. Then there is your riding style. This is the type of rider you are. If you keep flowing down the trails and using momentum to keep you going, you won't use as much battery as someone who's constantly stop and start on the trail. Important things such as cadence really matter to get the most out of your battery too. And lastly, maintenance. A well-maintained bike will simply go further and faster with brakes that don't drag. A lube drivetrain will make all the difference to eking out a little bit more range from your battery. Right, so I've just arrived at the point where the 500 was on 50%. Now I'm on the 700 watt hour battery and I've got seven bars of battery left versus the five that I had on the 500 watt hour. So that's pretty interesting. Right, so we're down to the 50% on the Levo 700 watt hour battery. Just done 13.4 miles, so just under 13 and a half miles, and it's dropped to 50% uh, battery. So a bit of climbing to do still yet, so that might drop again. We're definitely a lot further than the SL and the 500 watt hour. In fact, pretty much three and a half miles on top. We surpassed the 500 watt hour by quite a lot. We've actually just this second as I'm talking gone down to three bars left now on the 700 watt hour. So still quite a bit left. So we can see how much more 
Uh, a million more miles, you can get out of the bike. We're currently on 18.3 miles. All right, so we've just come to 22.7 miles. I've just dropped a bar of battery, so I've got two bars remaining at the minute. So we've got a big climb in front of me now, and it's off-road, it is chalky grass, and it's gonna be, so it looks like at 23.86 miles, the red light is on, and we have dropped down to our last bar of battery, I think. That is the end of the battery. I'm getting no noise coming from the motor, so it's just pedaling it alone. We've, right, so 25.26 miles on the 700 watt hour, and it is saying that it has got no more juice left. I've got the red light on on the battery, but no motor assist whatsoever left. So that is it for the 700 watt hours. So the results are in from today's ride, and we've got some pretty interesting results here. So in third place, we've got the Levo with the 500 watt hour battery. Now that went flat at 18.43 miles. In second place, we have the Levo SL with the 320 watt hour battery. That just pipped it with 19.03 miles. And then the winner of today is the 700 watt hour battery in the Levo. That went flat at 25.26 miles. So for today's ride, we used a couple of different bikes and I just want to touch base on those. So first up, we have the Levo SL. Now that bike is super lightweight. It's got a slightly less powerful motor than the full-on Levo. And therefore, when you're out on the trail, you do have to work that little bit harder to get up those climbs. You certainly can't just sit back and turbo and let the motor work for you. You've got to put the effort in. And it is a very lightweight bike. So the riding uh, style of that bike out on the trail is definitely different to the Levo. Then there is the Levo, which we run both the 500 watt hour battery and the 700 watt hour battery in. And to be honest, on the trail, you will not notice a difference between the two batteries. The only thing you might notice is your uh, level, your power level going down a little bit quicker on the 500 watt hour battery. But the bike itself is a more powerful unit and a more traditional e-bike feel to it. It'll give you a lot of assist when it comes to those climbs. You definitely know you're in turbo mode over the lesser powerful unit in the Levo SL. And one big thing I want to address from today's video is that you can get way more range out of these bikes than what I have today, simply by changing your power mode. We rode in turbo mode all day long for today, so simply running in trail in eco is gonna eek the most from that battery, as will the components that you run on your bike. For today's ride, I've had Maxxis Asagai downhill tires on my bike, which of course drag and take a lot of drain out of the battery. If you want to get the most range out of your e-bike, I suggest fitting a lightweight, fast rolling tire and a lightweight set of wheels. It'll help you get the most out of your battery. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Get involved down in the comments box down below and let us know about all your big rides, how far you guys have gone on one battery and what power modes and what size battery you're running. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and make sure you give us a find and a follow on your favorite social media. Cheers for watching.